Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Smart With Your Money Live. I am Chase Peckham, the Director of Community Outreach and Education at the San Diego Financial Literacy Center, the education arm of Debt Wave Credit Counseling. And as always, on this Wednesday, we are joined by my cohort, Felipe Aravalo. And today, Felipe, we're going to talk about stuff that people might find very boring, but yet it's about as crucial as it can be when it comes to personal finance. Uh, but it's just usually things that we don't even, we don't want to spend money on and we don't want to think about. Right. When it comes to topics that people want to cover, um, personal finance is, there's a lot of them that people avoid. This is a big one people avoid. Absolutely. Uh, so they're detriment. Really important. You yeah. Know? And it, it's not the most fun one either, um, but you know, it, it, it is important. So if you're watching this, uh, feel free to drop it in the chat. Any questions as we go, uh, we'll do our best to answer them. If you're on Facebook, I recruited a volunteer to watch it there and relay questions. Um, <laughs> I, I, she told me like, this is the topic you picked uh, to have me <laughs> relay questions on. And that would be my wife. Um, so drop it in there and those questions will get relayed to us. Um, so we'll get started. Wills, trusts, and uh, life insurance. Um, <clears throat> so if I can get this to click over. There you go. Um, when to set one up. Today's the day. If you haven't already set up one, if you've you know, been procrastinating or you know, doesn't matter why, um, you want to set one up as soon as possible. I'm not saying go run out the door. You want to finish the presentation first. But, you know, do try and set one up or at least start the process. Start the conversation with, with a significant other if, if that requires. Start the conversation with older family members who may or may not have one. And it could save a lot of uh, confusion, a lot of heartache, uh, uh, you know, a lot of unnecessary confusion down the road. But first, a little disclaimer, Chase and myself, um, all the information contained in these pages are for informational purposes only and not considered le should not be considered legal advice. So please consult an attorney for a lot of this um, and before taking any step steps based on the information. A lot of this is a legal process. Um, so, you know, please look into it more, but we're going to provide you here with, with some of Yeah, the with, this is basic understanding. We, we definitely we're not giving advice on that. You need professionals uh, with designated licenses to do so. Uh, and you want to make sure that you do everything correctly and everything is so personalized. Uh, it's really, really important that um, you get somebody to work with you on this and it doesn't have to be expensive. Yeah, this isn't one of those where like, oh, I just open up Word doc and go for it type of things. Uh, you definitely want to make sure that you get this right. Um, so it's one of those where spending a little money or maybe even a little extra on, on getting a professional or, or a service to help you can be a big benefit down the road. Um, so we'll start off with wills. Basically a will is you deciding, you making a note and, and, and making the choices, um, you know, where do you want your stuff, your property, your assets, your money to go um, in the event that you're no longer there, um, you know, do you, you know, you, you want to, if you don't make a plan, you know, if you don't, um, if you don't decide where your money's going, it's going to go somewhere, but then it's just going to go and this will be on the next slide, but it's going to go not necessarily where you want it to go. So the will kind of lets you pick and choose where you want your assets to go, um, who you want. And, and very important if you have children, especially young children, you know, you can name guardians for your children. The, I, I'm not going to call uh, kids assets, but, but there's, uh, you know, you can establish guardianship in the event that you're no longer there. Um, and, and that's something you can do in the will. Uh, and that's something that's perhaps more important than even the financial aspects to it. Well, bottom line is you just, you don't want the government telling you or telling your family where it's all going to go. You want to be right. able to, I mean, you've worked hard your whole life. You want to leave a legacy for your family. It's important that you put that together. Uh, so there's an, that follows it. Yeah. And there's a, there's often a misconception that you, know, you need a lot of money or only people who have a lot no. of money should be doing this. That's absolutely false. Everyone should do this. Even if you don't have 
a lot of assets. People are like, well, what is state? I don't have much, but not much is still something. And, right. and you can dictate where that something goes. Right. Um, and, and I think, you know, that's the, the, the most important part about the will. So if you don't have a will, and you just kind of go with the flow. Um, there is a plan for your property, um, whether you made a will or not. Uh, this is kind of the order that the states, obviously each state can vary, um, that you know it typically goes. Um, yeah, this is pretty typical. Spouse, 100% um, of the spouse. Or if there's children, they could go 50,000 to the spouse, then 50-50 between spouse and then the rest of the children. If there is no spouse, then 100% goes to the children shared equally. Um, if there's no children spouse, but only parents, 100% goes to the parents shared equally, siblings, and so forth down the list. So if you catch one, two, or three, then the rest of them don't apply. Um, but this isn't a quick process. You know, if you don't have a will, this could take years in probate court, which I'll touch on in a little bit. We're going to get to know what that is. We're going to get to that one too. But you can delay, maybe you, you're looking at it and you're like, yeah, of course I want it all to go to my spouse and my kids. So I don't need one. No, because you can shorten the amount of time that it, that, that, that it goes from, from you, you no longer being there to them actually receiving it by just setting up the will. Even if it's saying, yes, send it all to my spouse or yes, send it to my spouse and my children. Um, and, and you can just save them the money, the time, and the hassle of going through the probate court by just setting up a will ahead of time. So even if you're looking at this and you're like, oh, this looks like a solid course of action, don't rely on it. Go well, out no. there and set up the well, will. Well, because it can be contested. There's all kinds of things that can happen if it's just, it, it's messy. Yeah. It can take a long time. <clears throat> so like anything in looking, government. Right. Or anything in courts. And then you get delays. You don't know if there's going to be delays when that happens. Like, during COVID time where regular, every single thing was delayed, um, you know, that could have been even longer before they got their court date and they got everything squared away. Um, so who's left out by the state? Um, if you don't have a plan, who, who doesn't get anything? Uh, life partners, because notice it was spouse. So if you're, you live with someone, you cohabitate with someone, they're your life partners, but you're not actually married um you know for whatever reason um they have no rights out. they have no unless rights. you designate unless you it. right unless you put the rights in there um <clears throat> friends potentially uh relatives who are not next in line in the priority you know maybe you're not close to your siblings but you're really close with your cousin you don't set it up they don't skip your siblings to go to your cousin because oh he hasn't talked to his siblings in a long time uh and he's next door neighbors with his cousin whatever it is um pets you know people want to leave yes they do people leave, leave stuff, stuff to pets, pets believe it or not yeah and maybe it's just money to care for the pet and and you know whatever the the pet's needs are you know going forward um or who gets the pets and then right. some money to care for the pets or whatever it is um organizations or institutions people donate some of their estate some of their money some of their you know whatever property to organizations that they were passionate about. Um, potentially business partners. If you're in a business partnership with uh, you know, someone and, and part of that you know, assets might, might be in your name or whatever it is. And then specific gifts to specific people. You wanna leave your car to someone, you wanna leave your watch collection to someone else, you wanna leave and you can dictate and pick and choose you know, where all that is going. So you know, take that unknown from loved ones or whoever is, you know, trying to figure out what to do with your stuff after the fact um, by just having a plan, setting up a plan now. Um, so after uh, an, an asset holder dies, uh, the court appoints either an executor named in a will or an administrator, if there's no will, um, to administer the process of probate, to basically spread out stuff uh and distribute your things as you go um again this, not a short process no it, it's not like just oh okay yeah you uh so this involves contact uh collecting the assets of the deceased person to pay any liabilities so some debts if there's assets have to be taken care of um on the person's estate 
and to distribute the assets on the estate to the beneficiaries. But again, if there's no will, the court appointing you know, an, an administrator can take a long time, as opposed to if there's a will, the court can look at it, validate it, say, all right, looks good. Looks like it was this person and they know what to do with it. You're off and running. Go do whatever it is you need to do. Um, there could be, it could be years difference worth of go do this or let's just draw this out in court and figure it out later. Um, it sounds morbid, uh, but know. you know, cause you don't, you don't want to plan for the <laughs> inevitable of, about it. of death. I mean, that's not something we want to think about, but if we don't, we got to look at this and think about this of how do you want your family or your loved ones taken care of and how quickly. And if you don't do that, if you leave it up to the courts, if you leave it, then it's going to take longer and they could be stuck uh, and, and not uh, live the same way they have been living when you were around. And we've done a tax presentation and there's only two things that are guaranteed, death and taxes. That's right. <laughs> Here we go. We had to do this one too. Um, so, you know, it, it it, it's a tough one though. This is a tough presentation. It's not, you know, you'll notice you don't see the gifts and the everything else that I normally, gifts and memes and whatnot that I put into normal presentations because the topic doesn't lend itself for that. But, you know, continuing on what happens when, when people die, some types of assets pass directly by law uh, and they're not governed by your will, you know, thinking like a 401k, you know, if you have a surviving spouse that unless they, you've taken steps beforehand. Um, Which you probably have which you probably have if you went ahead and set up the whole thing. Um, you know, it, it can be, even when you sign up for, for a 401k, if you want it to go some, if you want to name the beneficiary who's not your wife, you have to get your or spouse, uh, you have to go get your spouse to notarize something saying it's okay for that to take place. Otherwise, it just defaults to them. Um, but everything passes uh, according to your will. Um, with probate assets, and then the amount someone can inherit through your will is reduced by your debts. So some debt obligations do need to be taken care of if there are assets in place. Um, if you have no assets, though, the family then is not required to pay your debts. Um, so right. There's that That's thing. a common misconception. Right. The only way that you would be responsible is if your name is or that that spouse or somebody else is on the contract with you that is a part of that. Right, if it's a joint account or, or something like that. So taxes, there's actually no income tax on inherited money um, unless that money comes from specific accounts like a retirement account, a 401k, IRA, an annuity. I believe the cap is $11 million or something in, in that area. Yeah, so it's a really big, really, really high, really large amount that, that you can get um, inherit without any kind of tax implications. Some other important uh, documents um, or sometimes called advanced directives. Um, you have a healthcare proxy, um, which is, um, it designates a person to make medical decisions uh, if you're unable to do so. Um, and then you can even put like a secondary contingent person in case the first one's not there or whatever. Uh, you know, be selective obviously who you pick or, or if, you, if you set one up. But you could also set up a living will. And, and not only do you set up a healthcare proxy person, but you can also tell them what to do and take that responsibility off their hands by setting up a living will. Um, and that kind of states, you know, what you would like to happen to you if you can't make your own health decisions. So then now it's not that person's responsibility to find out whether or not, you know, doing like a life support or resuscitation or, right. or things like that. Again, you give guidelines, topics, but it gives guidelines. This right. is how I want things to happen. I am not for my father. My father, I have strict guidelines. So it yeah. takes, so you're not basically it takes the, the emotional side out of it, or at least right. makes it a little bit easier as I know I have it down in writing and in a video of exactly what my father wants. And, and that's a good idea to have it down there also on video or something like that uh, with, because that way it's proof. Um, because a lot of times you might be fighting if you don't do it in time and the, and you're not of sound mind, um, then you might have family members that say, well, he can't really make these decisions. So right. if you do in advance when you are of sound mind, uh, you're setting yourself and well, you're setting your family up for a much better position. Right. And, and, and that way you 
really take the burden off your your healthcare proxy. Correct. Because now it's not like siblings or other family members coming back and saying like you can't do that. Like it's not really my choice. This is their decision. I'm yeah. just carrying out whatever has been set forth and agreed on beforehand. Um, and then they don't have to feel guilty about it because that's just they're carrying out your wishes. Yep. Um, then you have your power of attorney. Uh, this is a financial thing, and you know, being the San Diego Financial Literacy Center, um, you know, it designates a person to manage your financial affairs. Um, so you know, and, and this could be like a limited power of attorney or a full power of attorney. You really want to be careful, obviously, because then this person will have access to make changes to your finances. Yeah, and, to, and for example, if you don't, if you have a spouse or you have somebody that, if if you have your own bank account and you pass away doesn't matter if your wife is married or not she will not be able to get into your older your other bank account until a, for a long process it will take a while so if if you want somebody to be able to get at different accounts right away you need to make sure that they are on those accounts and that you have somebody that can run and efficiently run the power of attorney uh, that's a, and, and you carry it with you a lot i mean you always have it, have a copy away and have a copy with you because you just never know when these things are going to happen and I'm telling you, it, 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 it could be very difficult. I've done it myself. Yeah. And, and, and you want to make sure that you, you have the access, um, but, but also, you, like Chase said, set it up ahead of time. So, because if you wait too long, then it can be contested or you may not be considered able to make that decision anymore, um, you know, or whatever it is. And, and this could be something where, again all the other ones seem to be for like if someone were to pass away but you could recover and and that person may have just taken care of your bills for a month or two that you were right. in the hospital unable to make financial decisions this doesn't have to be like an end all be all but right. you know you may have spent a, a a month a month and a half in the hospital and at least this person can go in and be like look i still paid their mortgage i still paid their car whatever yes it is. um so you don't come out of the hospital you've been foreclosed on and your car being repossessed um, so, you know, that's, that's another one to, to keep an eye on. Um, then you have trusts. Um, so trusts are property. You, you, you put property into a trust and then it can be held for the benefit of another person, the beneficiary. Um, someone is called the trustee then manages the property or assets or whatever it is. Um, and, and they can benefit from it. Um, you know, uh, and again, this can be something, um, you know, this could be something where you have, uh, uh, people who are living who own or are all trustees of the same trust. This doesn't have to be like an after life type of thing. This could be a ongoing generational thing where, where, you know, assets can be put into the trust. There could be multiple trustees. And it just kind of smooths the process out. Um, and, and, and you can be very detailed as to how the assets within the trust can be used or, or are right. to be distributed. Um, so it, it makes it more simple more control and just simplifies the process. Um, and that trust can pay bills like we talked about before. So if you wanted it all, if you want your, a lot of your finances in, in a trust and you have people a part of that trust, they can write those as members of the trust. Right. But you got to trust them. Ha. Yeah. <laughs> that was good. I did not uh, mean to do that. <laughs> no, that was good. I liked it. Um, <laughs> it was an accident. So, you know, and you can, if you have younger children too, you could set up a trust and, and then they can, the trust can, you know, be, hold it and invest in. And you can have and rules in a trust. Right. So you can have it that when the kids come in, just like it will, but in the trust as well. So it just tightens it up. Uh, it, you know, your kids, you could, they can get a certain amount of their money when they turn 30. And if they graduated from college only, you know, you can set any parameters creative. you really want. You're right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's like a way to motivate them even after you're gone. Well, um, right. Well, it could be that they don't want them if, if something happens when they're early uh, and they, they go, Oh, well, I got all this money from dad. So I'm not, I'm going right. to quit college and go around the world. You know, this, it could be your dad, you know, a way for you to say, look, you know, you need to take care of yourself and you got to work for this and here this is when. Right. Other ways to to um, mitigate some of the, the dangers mm -hmm. of loss, um, at least financially, 
uh, is life insurance. It pays out a certain amount in the case of your death. Um, you pick the beneficiaries, so who gets the amount. Um, mostly needed if you have dependents. It's not a bad idea if you don't have dependents to have at least a little uh, to cover your own expenses. Um, and you can leave it in a trust to, to minor children as well. Again, going back to trusts. Um, but, you know, so it's, it's a way of kind of adding a financial protection in the event you're not there financially the individuals that you name on the life insurance can, you know, have some uh, kind of protection. It's really, really important. Yeah. Very, very important. I mean, exactly. you don't have to be wealthy, uh, but if you want your family, if you're, if, if, if you're, you know, you have a large, an income that's coming in that takes care of your family and you all of a sudden pass, you want to have set up your family to be able to at least live the way they are accustomed to living, if not more. And you can do that with life insurance. So it's very important that you look into that as well. Yeah. So what kind do you get? There's, there's multiple kinds of life insurance. The two main ones, uh, term life insurance and whole life insurance. Uh, term life insurance is just kind of that. It's for a term, for a certain amount of Typically amount 20 of years. So you might get a 20 year. Um, so basically it, it's cheaper than whole life. Um, the younger you are, the healthier you are, even cheaper. Uh, so let's say you get a 20 year term life insurance, you pay into that, you pay monthly into that life insurance. If sometime in those 20 years you pass, then it'll pay out the amount, uh, the predetermined amount. If you make it to the 20 years, then good for you. That's what we're all aiming for. I think you gotta get a new one, um, but you gotta, you gotta get a new one or, you know, spread them out but it know, is cheaper layer them um but there's no benefit um and that's why it's cheaper though because right. you know they you, you make it to the 20 years they don't have to pay out whereas whole life insurance that's going to pay out eventually you you pay it's it's for your whole life so you continuously make payments it's more expensive because obviously as you get older you have that same payment amount you're still paying out but at some point it's going to pay back it will um, pay back so, so that one, even while you're living, actually, you eventually you can take money. You can take it against it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, there, there's definitely the benefits to, to each and, and I encourage you to look into both of them. It, it's not even a bad idea to have both. Uh, just yeah. because you have one doesn't mean you can't have the other, um, you know, and, and there's others like universal life insurance or variable life insurance it gets a little more complicated, but these yeah. are the two. It's a whole other presentation. Uh, yeah. But that I could do a whole presentation on insurance, um, you know, but those are the two main ones uh, to try and determine, you know, which kind of insurance you should get. Um, any questions? And we'll do our best to answer them. All right. Facebook either. Um, <clears throat> okay. So, all right. No questions. That means we did a great Man, job. That's good. That must mean we did, we did our a job. Great job presenting, or we put everyone to sleep. One of the two. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so please continue learning. Um, you can listen to episodes on life insurance, on trusts and wills. Um, we've done topics on everything, personal finances, and yet we still find a new topic every week. Uh, Talk Wealth to Me podcast. Get it wherever you get your other favorite podcasts, um, or you can listen to it right on our website. Um, and, and let us know if you think of a topic that we can cover here on Swim Live and or on the podcast uh, as well. And then join us in two weeks. We will be covering same time, same channel. Um, financial considerations for caregivers. Again, this one, wills and trust, it may not be a bad thing if you have elder family members to just kind of check in and a tough Sick. conversation to have, but just kind of check in and say, hey, do you have this? Is this in place? Where can I find it? Where can the, does the person who you assigned these duties to know and where can they find it? Right. Um, you know, so, but financial considerations for caretakers in or for caregivers in two weeks 
Um, we'll be back for that. And then if you go onto the link there on the Eventbrite, you'll find all the upcoming uh, topics that we have set up through, I think, through the middle or end of the summer. Um, so you can register for, for any that you might find interesting. And uh, thank you, everybody, for stopping by and watching. Yep. Um, and look forward to seeing you in two weeks. Have a great day, everybody.